Well, welcome to the program today, Victor. I'm pleased to have you on. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me here. I always start by asking uh, my guests, what is it that brought you to Treasury and why did you choose Treasury as your career? Well, um, that's a great question. I have to say that I'm, I'm working in Treasury and, and I did not know that I was, I was going to be working in, in Treasury. I, I began my career back in 2001 and really focused on, on finance, general finance. And um, you know, over the years, I've been uh, having a lot, uh, you know, experience in different areas. And I was, in fact, at some point in, in a program to be kind of a finance director or kind of a CFO. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then uh, uh, one of the steps that to to complete that program was to have an experience in treasury. Uh, and then you know, once I had that experience in, in treasury, I, I fell in love. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, uh, you know. Uh, change uh, to any other department, so to speak, because I, I this is exactly what I what I was looking for. Uh, so I could recognize immediately. So that's that's why I'm interested right now. After you know that experience that happened probably more than 15 years ago. It's actually quite funny, Victor, because most of the listeners and most of my guests are probably the same. Um, very few people study treasury, and it's just one of those things they fall into. But as I often say, once you're bitten by the treasury bug, it's very hard to leave. Yes, absolutely. I, 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 I can see that. Just for the listeners, I'll just give them your background. So um, you're Venezuelan. Um, you started back um, in general accounting uh, with Turnium, um, but you spent three years there. You then moved to Daimler and spent a year in audit. Um, you then moved to Goodyear Tire, um, where you spent 15 years and basically grew from a general finance role, as you mentioned, discovered Treasury and then rose all the way through to be um, the treasurer of Latin America. Um, and then moved across to the US with the business. So um, 15 years with Goodyear, and then you've spent the last two years uh, with Nissan um, as the treasurer of the North American operation. So perhaps just give the listeners a bit of an understanding from your side, what would you say have been some of your career highlights during that time? Yeah, so I guess, you know, when, when, now that I look back to my career and basically I see, well, what, what, what are those things that I kind of feel uh, proud of, so to speak, right, that, that I have accomplished. And, you know, I guess, um, you know, I, I, I again, I, I, I feel that treasury is my my passion. So, um, and and then I feel really good to uh, that I, I've had experience at field level, regional level and corporate level as well, uh, you know, for, for 40 years, five years when I was working with a good year as well. So I, I have completed each one of the basically ladders, so to speak, or, or steps uh, in within within the treasury uh, in, within the within within an organization in treasury, so to speak, and also uh, brought uh, brought uh, specific treasury areas as well. So operations, uh, uh, you know, capital market rating agencies, corporate corporate type of topics and, and field type of topics as well. Um, that's the other thing that I, I feel I feel I feel proud about it and, and then you know finally uh as you as you said i've been i've been moving around so i, I began in, in venezuela my, my home country uh what it was my home country at that time i have to say um and then um you know i i, I had experience in in different in, uh, countries in latin america also in europe uh, so you know i've been working and living or have work and lived uh for in five five forty five countries so that's basically the the third aspect of uh um, you know, my career at this point when I look back. And would you say, and just again, for the listeners, um, you grew up in Venezuela, you've then worked in Brazil and Chile um, and Mexico in South America. Um, you had a stint in Luxembourg over in Europe, and now you live in Ohio um, in the US um, and obviously had worked in, in various places um, across the US as well. How, how did you find moving to different places and, um, you know, the different work cultures through that uh, that journey. Well, I guess uh, I'm going to I'm going to answer that question from from two perspectives, right? One is the personal one, and and the second is is uh, the the technical one, the professional one from from treasury perspective. I have to say, uh, the my, that pe personal experience has been great. I have to tell you, you know, the fact that you can kind of meet people with different mindset, different values, different way to see. Uh, the world and the different uh, basically priorities at the same time um, give you a, give you a good sense of uh, understanding kind of a, the global dynamic better 
Ryzen or why why something is is important, really important in one one entity and what it, what in the other is not. Why, uh, for for instance, you know, a U.S. based corporation is is so um, you know sensitive uh, to the stock price. Uh, when you look at an Asian one, perhaps is the stock price is not necessarily kind of a, the, the the key variable that they see. Uh, so you know you, you you can you can have a better feel about you know what are those priorities that different people in different parts of the world have. Um, and how they how they basically uh, they they live their life, um, so that that's that's great that's great. On on the technical side as well, you know I guess uh, you know we we are you know with the communications and all the boom and 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 the, the technology and so on. So obviously uh, the world is is, uh, is is closer. I mean every country is closer right now, but at the same time it's, it's different. So I guess um, you know you have a better understanding about what di that diversity in terms of treasury means in each one of the jurisdiction uh, where a given company could have business. With. So that that's that's basically what I would say has been the key, um, the two key factors that I've gained uh, with that ex ex international experience. Just going back to um, your career, um, the the role at Nissan. I know we've spoken with Rakesh, who's your boss, based out of Japan. Um, but Nissan's a fantastic business from a treasury perspective, really interesting um, for the listeners out there in that you've got the corporate that you look after from a treasury perspective, but you've also got the captive finance business as well. Just, just give us a bit of a sort of an overview of the, you know, the US, you look after the US, Canada and South America. So perhaps just a, an idea of size and scale and how that fits together. Yeah, that that's a great uh, a great point. So, you know, I, I believe Nissan, Nissan is well known by many of your listeners, you know, by one of our is one of the um, mayors or leaders uh, in terms of uh, auto um, uh, auto companies in the world. Um, so I'm not going to explain what Nissan does, but I, I can tell you, you know, the treasury function uh, at Nissan here is is really um, is really interesting because you know we we have to look after what I would call the auto or the the auto division itself. You know, the manufacturing piece of the business, selling vehicles and producing vehicles and all what what it matters. What that, in, what that implies, and and then also we have to look after the sales finance uh, uh, part of the business, which is basically you know financing those vehicles to our final customers. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really interesting uh, um, arrangement and challenge for a treasury professional, so to speak, because you know you are gaining experience uh, in 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 two major. Uh, different it's one company but are two, ma two major different businesses so to speak right you know one is a finance business completely finance where kind of every base point is is i mean you have to fight because that's basically your cost of goods sold in in in, in, in the auto side right so uh and then you have the the auto as, as i said so it's, it's really it's really a, um a very good uh, uh you know um opportunity, so to speak. And that's why I'm here, to be honest with you, because when Rakesh invited me to be here and then he explained me what they were doing, they said, well, you know, this is a great opportunity uh, to, to have the experience. And uh, material as well, I have to tell you, you know, print and the sales finance uh, business here in the US, uh, you know, have, uh, they have, uh, uh, we have uh, assets uh, about, you know, 40, almost $40 billion. So the debt is $30 billion that have to be, you know, uh, we're talking about MTNs, bonds, uh, uh, asset-backed commercial papers, uh, securitization programs, and term loans or bank loans as well. So you know, it's it's completely a complete uh, uh, you know uh, um, universe of uh, capital market pros that we have to be working with to to fund that business. And in addition to the operational one, as as, as, as you know, they have their, their their own challenges as well. And um, Victor, because they're you know, $30 billion of, of debt, um, that puts you as one of the biggest issuers um, in the debt markets behind the banks, from my understanding. Is that right? Yeah, so in the, in the ABS front, uh, yes, that, that's, that's true. Uh, Nissan um, in 2000, I, I don't have the final, the final metric for, for the 2020, but in 2019, for instance, was the fifth um, a largest issuer of ABS uh, in the in the United States, um, obviously you have to exclude the mortgage the mortgage business because this is a different story. But when you when you look at credit cards, auto, uh, all the other asset type of uh, um, of that are securitized today, uh, you know Nissan is the fifth. So we're talking about this is a material um, is a material business, so to speak, uh, 
obviously for Nissan, but also in, in the in the capital market world in the US. What do you enjoy the most in that uh, in that role, then, Victor? The, the, what's the just for the listeners to give you a, a bit of an understanding? Well, I, I have to say, it's it's, it's really it's really. Uh, uh, I mean, it's difficult to pick one because I enjoy all, all what I do all day long. I have to tell you, uh, you know, the capital markets piece obviously is, is is sexy, as you probably have described this before, Simon. I'm taking this uh, this this adjective from you. Um, so it's a sexy piece, you know. It's exciting every time that you have a transaction and you have to be kind of a time in the market and fighting for the base points, and you know, it's it's, it's a it's a really nice dynamic that that I'm kind of enjoying. But at the same time, you know, um, uh, one of the things that you know uh, is is perhaps you, I wouldn't say unique, but not all companies are the same. Um, for instance, you know, given the visibility and given the relevance that for Nissan has, the free cash flow management uh, is uh, is is handled by Treasury here. Sometimes it's FP&A, but no, we do we do manage FP, uh, free cash flow here uh, in Treasury, and then that that gives you a, a really good opportunity to interact with the uh, business and you know uh, the the chairman or the president and you know how, basically impact the business as well. So I guess um, I would say this role is, is really complete because that, that has this piece as well. That that I am enjoying as well a lot. Definitely. And I mean, in in regard to your team, you've got a big team to be able to manage all of that. What would be the the key things that you look for when you're recruiting your direct reports? Yeah. So I, I guess uh, I would say three three main. Uh, Three main things that I will look after. Uh, I would say, um, obviously, technical skills have to be there, right? You know, depending on the level, obviously. But you know, I guess uh, you know, or the technical skill has to be there, or uh, you know, if it's an entry level, I have to make sure that you know that that person could be able to pick it up earlier as well. That having enough uh, fundamentals, so to speak, uh, to 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 learn quickly. Uh, but also kind of uh, the, the human skills are, are key. And when I'm talking about human or soft skills, I'm talking about obviously, you know, manage, manage people, um, you know, uh, interpersonal skills, uh, be a good negotiator, because, you know, we as in treasury, we are negotiating every time, every day, internally and externally as well. Um, so that's, those are the skills that are key uh, for, for um, a treasury professional that I, I, I look after. You've moved around the world, as we've just mentioned. Um, what's been your approach to networking um, throughout your career? Well, I guess net, networking is, is key, right? And, and probably, I mean, you know, this sounds like a cliche, right? Because you know, everyone is going to tell you that, that probably the same, that networking is key. But when you think about you know, what, what, what we in Treasury um, do, um, you know, we, we are basically you know, influencing every time uh, with all people that, that we work with. Um, and then, um, you know, and it's not necessarily internally within the company, but also externally, you know, we have a lot of uh, interaction with, uh, um, you know, obviously banks, um, but also rating agencies, um, you know, if, if you are in, in the middle of a merge or, or uh, you know, acquisition as well with others, so you're influencing and, and the, the best way to influence um, is, is, is be able to create a, a, a solid network. Uh, in that regard, so that's basically from the professional side. Obviously, from the from your own side, from your prof for personal, so to speak, and you want to manage your career um, as well. Networking is, is really important. It's how you navigate in, within the organization to to you know to be recognized and 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 basically show your potential and and be able to influence as well uh, decisions that uh, leaders are going to take. And I think the the one thing that a lot of people don't think about, you know, with networking, everyone tells you you need to do it is. You know, networking, in my view, is not about just getting your next job. It's about, you know, contributing and being part of the community for when you do need to get your next job. But if you start approaching it when you need the job, it's too late. Um, so I agree yeah. with you. It is absolutely that. But just, you know, from a listener's perspective, you know, don't think about it as I need a job. I need to network. You need to be networking now so that in time, you know, you can be part of that community when you do need a job. But it's about helping others and, and you know, being part of the greater good um, before that as well. Having a big team um, and being in big organizations like you have, Victor, have mentors played a part in your career? Oh, yes, definitely. You know, because, you know, obviously I, 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 I was an entry level professional at some point, right? You know, I, I guess, you know, I'm, I, I am where, uh, where I am because of, uh, you know, good people that, uh, you know, so 
uh, potential and also guided guided me uh, during this journey. Uh, and you know, I guess uh, one of the key the key um, kind of asset that you know one 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 person could have to manage uh, his career and expectations as well is to have a mentor, um, which basically could help him to um, guide himself through through uh, the career in, in a, on an organization. So yeah, mentor is. Uh, I have had several mentors, and I still have mentors. I have to tell you, um, and and um, and uh, I believe everyone should have one, at least. And, and Victor, are, are they formal? Um, you know, within the, the Nissan business, or are they more informal, just throughout your community? Well, at some point, I have I have had both. Uh, at some point um, in, in my career, I had uh, you know again a really well defined um, a, you know path in one organization that I worked before, and then there was a mentoring program, so to speak, and then, you know, it was, it was formal, so to speak. Um, but, you know, I would say the most effective mentors that I've had are informal, uh, um, uh, because, you know, there is not that compromise, and then you feel free, basically, to talk, and not necessarily have to be within the organization, by the way. I mean, um, you know, you, you can find a mentor outside the organization, you know, some, someone who could have a good guide you understand how to navigate the, the, the entity, but not necessarily would have to be within the organization. So I guess, uh, um, um, you know, I have had, for instance, people who has been my boss uh, in the past that still are my mentors, for instance, right? And still, I, uh, you know, when I have a problem, I take the phone and, you know, ask questions and I kind of advise and, you know, always is, is good. To have that type of uh, uh, advice from someone who has more experience, and it's amazing as well. I think for the younger listeners out there, um, there's a lot of people who who are quite happy to mentor. In fact, um, one of my previous podcast guests um, stepped up and, not knowing a person, said, "Yeah, I'll happily mentor them." And and he's going through now. Um, they've defined a plan for the next couple of years to get her from point A to point B, um, and he just finds it really rewarding. So if anyone you know out there is listening and wants a mentor, you know, it's one of those things. Just ask someone that you think you'd like to you know to have as your mentor most of the time those people time permitting will actually be open to having a chat with you so i think if it's if it's something you want just go out and, and ask victor in terms of um, your career you've obviously achieved a lot if you were to take yourself back to you know the 25 year old self you know just starting your career what's the one piece of advice that you wish you knew back then that you know now well, I would say uh, early in my career, uh, you know, uh, I would say probably I, I would, I, I would, um, now reflecting back, I would say that probably I had to be a little bit more patient at the beginning of my career. Um, so, you know, I guess, um, uh, and, and that basically, you know, uh, made me to take some decisions that basically were not good decisions in the long term run. Uh, obviously, in the short term, you know, they 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 look well. Um, so that's probably something that I would say. I, I would uh, I would probably, if I go back, I would change in, in my in my in my in my path. Now, obviously, that's experience, right? You know, that's you know, you, you learn this uh, because you know you have some years. You know, when you are a young guy, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult. You have ambition. You want to grow. You want to be kind of early. Um, show your potential that I'm sure that you have, uh, that as uh, many people have at that time, but also the experience is, is, uh, is, is an important piece of the equation um, to be able to get, uh, you know, higher level positions and, and so on. I think uh, that, that's really good advice. Like I, I was the most impatient guy when I was younger, just wanted to climb that ladder as fast as I possibly could. And now like with, with time and a few more gray hairs, you do realize that life is a marathon and not a sprint, don't you? And, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter so much, you know, six months when you're 25 makes a big deal. Um, but, you know, six months when you, when you're later in your career, it just flies by, doesn't it? That, that's true. And then that's a good, uh, that's a good way to describe. This is a marathon, right? And then basically you have to enjoy, you know, what you are doing and you have to think about in the long-term run. I always think about, you know, think about yourself in 10 years where you want to be, uh, you know, work hard to get there, have fun and, and you know, be flexible as well. You know, uh, because not necessarily it's going to be the point A, maybe it's going to be point A1, uh, which is going to be close, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the journey. Yeah. And, and you know, I just pick up on a point you said there as well. You've got to enjoy. Um, I get asked a lot about, you know, career decisions and career development and the like. Um, and 
I, I personally think that that enjoyment and working with people that you want to work with um, and that you can learn from is far more important than, you know, the job description that you think that you want. Um, too many people, I think, jump at a job description and say, that's my, you know, my best job ever. Um, that's exactly where I want to go. Um, but I think that if you get that job with people that you don't enjoy working with, it's going to be hard going every day to, you know, to go to work and, um, and run that job for as long as you can, you know, when you're not enjoying yourself on a day to day basis. So I think surrounding yourself with people and a culture that um, you want to work in is also super important. Absolutely. Um, with technology advancements, Victor, um, how do you see the role of the treasurer changing um, in the coming years? Well, that, that, that's a good question. I guess um, I have to say, um, you know, again, this is a cliche. Uh, technology is, is, is evolving every day and every time, is, you know, it's, it's evolving at, a, at a, you know, it's quicker, so to speak. Uh, I, I have to say we in Treasury, um, I believe we are used to, to, to basically look at what is happening outside our company because of what we do, right? And we have to look at financial markets. We have to look at, um, you know, we, are, we, are, we have that training, so to speak. And then one piece of uh, advice would be also to look at the, the latest developments. And we were seeing, for instance, you know, companies in a traditional, so to speak, environment saying that they're going to uh, um, invest and they are investing perhaps in cryptocurrencies. I mean, that's, that's something that perhaps, you know, five years ago, you would never imagine. And it was, there is a huge debate, you know, you know, a corporation should be investing in cryptocurrencies or not. So in other words, I mean, we have to be open to those ideas and, and um, you know, be uh, early takers. If you believe that the risk reward equation, you know, uh, is, uh, is, is favorable uh, and, and, and see how the trend is. And but that, that's what I would say, be open to, to, to be open, open mind to, for, for, for changes. And it's interesting on that as well, Victor, I think that, you know, Treasury is risk averse, that's your job. Um, and, and you're wanting to, to not take on, uh, on risk. Uh, and technology to some degree, um, if you're an early adopter, is a bit of a risky proposition, isn't it? So, you know, you need to balance that of being a, being a first mover um, and, and the risk side of it, is that right? That, that's right. That's the risk reward uh, equation that I that I, I would just mention, right? You know, is is uh, what what is the risk that you're going to take, and what is the benefit that you can you can see, and you can have to decide. You know, are you going to be a follower or are you going to be a leader? Um, the, the the challenge, so to speak, in 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 um, you know for us or not the challenge. You know, again, when when I look at and let, let, let me explain Nissan as a, as a, as an entity, right? So we we make be, uh, we make money because we build cars. So that's that's our business, right? You know, we have to do everything that we can do to have uh, the best product at the best cost, possible cost with the best technology to uh, basically uh, serve our our clients. So that that's that's how that's what we do, and that's what and we do it well. Um, so in, in that sense, all the other uh, areas are kind of a, um, supporting areas for for that business model. Uh, so the question is, you know, is this, this technology that you are envisioning that is going to impact treasury, is it going to help at the end of the day that final goal of your corporation? And I just put in my example here, Nissan, every, con every, every uh, uh, business is different, right? I can imagine, I don't know, in the, for an airline, uh, the experience of one person paying uh, the, the ticket probably is, is different than for a customer buying a car for Nissan. Uh, so it's a different it's a different set of uh, business and a different um, the proposition that have to happen. One last question for you, Victor. Um, what makes a successful treasurer in the eyes of the C-suite in your mind? I, I would say, you, you know, the 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 um, the, the success a successful treasury would be one that not I mean the Obviously, that the treasury have to handle well all what is related to treasury core treasury matters, as we know, right? You know, funding, uh, capital market, uh, you know, operations. Uh, um, you know, that that that's that's that have to be given. Now, what I would say makes the difference here is that the treasury itself can can understand the business and can support the business as well. And then going back to to my example, you know. Uh, 
we do we do sell vehicles here. You know, that's what we do in, in at Nissan. So all what I can do to have this process easier and to understand that process and to influence that process uh, in this case uh, is basically what is going to make a, a difference in, in, in my career at this point within, within Nissan. Uh, so um, in, in other words, it's, it's not just the treasury, the core treasury, the core operational treasury is also that a strategic mindset as well. And that the other people within the organization feels you, treasury is adding value to the organization. We, we, need, we need treasury basically. Definitely. And I think business partnering and adding value to the business, working with the business is, uh, is fundamental, isn't it? I hear that all the time. Yes. Well, Victor, thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure chatting today. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I'm glad to be here and um, good luck with your, with your podcast.